John, good morning. How are you? I had like a, a protein shake for breakfast instead of uh, pork belly and uh, French toast, but uh, I could, well, I could, I could be sitting next to you right now, loving life. Yeah, no, I didn't have French toast or pork belly. I, I, I don't <laughs> eat breakfast. I don't get here till nine thirty. If I ate breakfast at nine thirty in the morning, no, I had, uh, I had coffee, and uh, I had uh, half a bagel with cream cheese as my, I was, and some grapes coming out the door i tell you what i mean i'm not i'm not trying to brag and I, I i i don't eat healthy all the time i work out every day so i can kind of eat you know calories i like calories calories are my friend <laughs> calories are uh, good. you know but but especially the ones that taste good i like the good tasting calories but let me tell you the black grapes that are out right now seedless black grapes I, that's the other thing. I'm consuming lots of those along with lots of preseason football magazine because yep. those grapes are off the chart. And that's what I had a, a bunch of this morning and yesterday, in fact. Well, I'll tell um, you what. All right, tell me. Oh, go ahead. Lindy's preseason college football magazine is guilt-free, no calories, no fat, no carbs, no protein, no anything except good college football. And they tried to kill as few trees as possible in the making of this magazine. So, <laughs> all right. Um, you know what? Tell me, t tell the folks the story. I mean, because with COVID-19, we all know things are crazy out there. And it was, it, they had you wondering whether you were going to do any writing or not for a while. Yeah. You know, usually we, we start these, about the time spring football gets started, you know, that you get the call from the editor and he says, here's what we need from you this year. And usually it's the exact same as last year, but sometimes they add stuff. Sometimes they take away stuff. So it's a planning process that starts in basically March. And by the time the spring game at Oklahoma, for instance, uh, middle of April, usually by the time the spring game is played, you're wrapping it up and you're saying, okay, we think going into the summer that this is what we know about this particular football team. Well, I got the call from my Lindy's editor about the, about three quarters of the way through April. And I just assumed at this point that, you know, hey, we might not have a season, so that means we might not have a magazine. He called me and said, hey, start putting some ideas together. Here, here, you know, we're, we think we're going to have a magazine. We think it's going to be good to go. But just be ready, you know, in case we call you. Just, you know, have some – I was like, okay, sure. Be, I'll be prepped. And then, like, I don't know two weeks later I got the call or maybe a week later, maybe even five days later. Hey, uh, can you have all your stuff done for all three of those schools plus the big 12 conference in nine days? That's our deadline. Nine days. We're printing this year, regardless of whether we have a season. I was pretty, it was a, it was a kind of a, gee, I wonder if we're going to make some of that summer off season money. I wonder if uh, we're going to have some assignments to, Oh my God, I got to get it all done in nine days. Wow. Uh, and, and, you know, I've heard kind of similar stories. We had uh, John Helsley on last week. He does uh, a lot of work for Athlons. And we had, uh, oh, uh, Blair Kirkhoff on from Kansas City. He does a lot for Street and Smith. Um, a lot of the magazines are similar. Uh, Street and Smith thinks a little more highly of Texas, Athlons, and, and Lindy's. I honestly think Lindy's, and, and I know you get – input on some of this but the national editing staff has their input as well and i think lindy's probably is as high on oklahoma state as uh, as any of the three your thoughts on oklahoma state because i know this from being around mike gundy i can sense from him he he feels this is the best chance they've had to to make some noise some big noise since 2011 yeah, I think the way that I wrote it in the magazine was that there might be actually a little pressure on Mike Gundy this year uh, and not to, to go to a bowl game, not to beat Oklahoma, but to actually win the Big 12 championship because they've got a team that is loaded. They've got, a team, they've got what I call the best offense in, in the country. Um, imagine that. And I, I don't mean the fastest or the highest scoring or the one with the most yards, the one that's going to rank number one. I mean the one with the most talent. And when you have the best running back in the country and, in my opinion, the best receiver in the country and a dynamic young quarterback and a bunch of offensive linemen back and a two-year starter transferring in and your cowboy back, Jelani Woods, is back, all this talent is back on this offense. I think it's the best offense in the country. 
and then you bring back 10 starters on defense, uh, yeah, I, I really think Oklahoma State is loaded for a uh, is, is loaded to be that team that challenges Oklahoma because Oklahoma. I, I tried this a couple of years ago, Robert. When I when Lindy's asked me for my preseason Big Twelve picks, I said I think Oklahoma State's got a chance. Uh, got a chance. It was Mason Rudolph's last year, I think, and I said I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna upset Oklahoma Oklahoma this year. Now they didn't. Oklahoma is now on a five stri- five win five championships in a row. And I thought to myself, boy, Oklahoma State's got the talent this year, but how do you pick against Oklahoma, who continues to lord over the Big 12 Conference? Yeah, and, and I agree. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm picking Oklahoma. Uh, I'm picking Oklahoma State second. Uh, and I, you know, I think, I think there's definitely a, a chance a big chance for Oklahoma state. Now here's something I thought was interesting that I caught this morning. I was kind of going through all the, the position rankings, the national position rankings and the Cowboys have Chuba's like number two running back. Thailand's number three among receivers. Uh, Amen Ogbon Bamiga is number five with the linebackers and Kobe Harville peels in the top 10. But when I got to quarterbacks, the, the quarterbacks in the big 12 that are ranked are, um, you know, the guys you would kind of expect. I mean, you know, Brock Purdy is, I, I think, coming back is is a tremendous talent uh, for Iowa State. And, and we all know about uh, uh, Ellinger at Texas, um, you know, Brewer at Baylor. But then I, I saw where uh, Spencer Radler, and I, I know his recruiting rankings, how high he was ranked. And he did, he did okay last year in some mop-up duty. But he's ranked as the 24th best quarterback in the country and has <laughs> never started a game. And, yeah. you know, and here's the deal. I remember a year ago, I was I I was bragging about Spencer Sanders, John, and and his first game with Oregon State. You're like, wow, if this is game number one, mm-hmm. maybe this guy is is not going to. And then you got to Texas Tech and five turnovers. I just. Even even guys that are really talented, I, I think, have learning curves to deal with as young quarterbacks. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. 24th best quarterback in the country. Sounds high when you say it like that. That's like, really? Of all the quarterbacks that are coming back, Spencer Rattler's the 24th best. But, Robert, the, the highest nods for 2020 came out yesterday, or I, I should yeah. say they were updated yesterday. And he's third. He's yeah. third in the Heisman race at twelve to one. And I thought behind behind Fields, obviously, and Lawrence. And I thought, now that sounds high. He's third in the country. Um, and, and I I pulled that story apart a little further. I went back and looked at what the the actual Heisman winners that year, in in a given year, what their preseason Heisman odds were. Joe Burrow was two hundred to one. Yeah. So. I mean, this makes for good off-season talk and stuff like that, and it keeps us busy for sure, and it's fun to talk about. But I, I really, I, I, I would be shocked if, in his first year as a starter, as a redshirt freshman at Oklahoma, if Spencer Rattler was in New York City. Uh, yeah, that would uh, that would be a long shot. But then again, I think a lot of people put bank on. Um, it's not it's not just the kid as much as anything. It's the franchise and the guy in charge yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, Lincoln Riley uh, has he hadn't he's he hadn't yet had a season as a head coach where he hadn't put a guy in New York, right? Uh, 2015. Okay, 2015. I think Baker uh, finished fourth, uh, third or fourth in 2016, and then won it 17, and then 18, obviously, and then Jalen Hurts last year. Okay, well that's that's interesting. So uh, let's get back to the 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 Big Twelve. And Oklahoma State, and and I'll I'll ask you, you know, since you looked at them and went through it, and the most exciting thing to me, and and I know this sounds almost crazy because you got a guy like Chuba Hubbard, and I think, I think you wrote somewhere in there, uh, or somebody, uh, it may have been uh, one of the front stories, and Dennis Dodd, it would be a shame not to have a season and watch this guy play because he is fun to watch, and then you got Tylen, and and the offensive line's good, and. The most exciting thing to me about this Oklahoma State team is the defensive line because, you know, a year ago, Joe Bob Clements will tell you he didn't sleep at night. 
He didn't have a <laughs> single player coming back that had a start, just one start. Yeah. There was not a single player on the team that had ever started a game on defensive line. And in the span of a year, I look at this defensive line now, and it's it's honestly the best I've seen around here in a long time. And, and they're still young. There's a lot of guys that will be back beyond this season. And I'm not saying – it's like I told Phil Steele yesterday. He asked me what I was most excited about. And I said, the defensive line, Phil, because they could play in the SEC. And he kind of, what? And I said, not – they're not Alabama. They're not LSU. They're more like Ole Miss or Auburn or, or Mississippi State. But they, they, they could play in that league, the way they look and the way they play. And for a team that has never – has not had a lot of great defensive linemen, at least not in groups, that, that excites me that they could, they could be pretty good on the defensive front. Yeah, and, and I like some of the names there too. Trace Ford, obviously, mm-hmm. is a guy that comes in and is an impact player. Israel Antoine comes back home from uh, Colorado. And, and look what he did in his first year. But there's some other guys that, that I think are good players. And, and here's the deal, Robert. T- guys like Tyler Lacey and, and I guess Brock Martin started some games last year. They're backed up by a talented, I think, and experienced secondary and some linebackers who will just flat get after you. So, the, you know this, the, the better your DBs are, the better your D-line looks. The better yep. your, uh, your linebackers get after people and go sideline to sideline and, and fit the run gap properly, the better your D-line looks. So you're right, uh, but, it, but it goes both ways as well. The better your D-line plays, the more freedom those guys have to run around and make plays. And, and I think that's something that, uh, that Oklahoma State, Jim Knowles, you know, he, he admitted in his, uh, going into his second year, yeah, I think I was a little bit surprised at how uh, efficient the Big 12 offenses were from week to week to week. He said he wasn't ready for that kind of assault every week. But I think he he adjusted nicely last year, and I think you're going to continue to see growth in year three. And then on the other side, Casey Dunn steps in as a as a new offensive coordinator, but not a new coach. He's been here a long time, and, and here's another – kind of piece of the coaching dichotomy that that might work Casey knows the offense knows the weapons and I think Mike realizing that that Spencer Sanders needs a a a whisperer he needs a guy that will help really help him develop has hired Tim Rattay and Rattay doesn't have to worry about calling plays he's just there to mature Spencer and the young quarterback Shane Illingworth that might work. That equation might be a, a, a part that really works well. Yeah, I, I'm eager to see what Tim Rattay can do as, as a quarterback's coach in Stillwater. Um, one of the first, I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of the first college games that I covered, I think as the Arkansas beat writer for the Tulsa World at the time, he was the quarterback at Louisiana Tech, and he, he lit the Razorbacks up. It was a, And, you know, he went on to a great college career and played in the NFL, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that that aspect of it. And I want to see if, you know, we've beaten up the, the OSU offensive line for pretty much most of the last four or five years, I think. You don't produce a 2,000-yard rusher and um, go through, cycle through the quarterbacks that put up big numbers like Oklahoma State has if you're not blocking a little bit up front. I think those guys were fantastic last year, and I think the three guys that are back this year plus – Josh Stills, I'll be interested to see how the chemistry goes between those guys, who all shakes out, you know, at what position and, and who, who locks down which position, that kind of thing. But those guys up front, I think, are very underrated at Oklahoma State. I think that's, that's as much a, a part of uh, going to be Oklahoma State's success this year as the big names. Because, as you know, without those guys up front, you know, your big names can, can run into a brick wall. Uh, and, and that did not happen last year. There, Chuba Hubbard had a lot of yards last year before contact. So uh, I'll be interested to see how the Oklahoma State offensive line continues to develop this year. Yeah, and, and you got to, I, I mean, you kind of have to give Gundy credit too. He lose, loses Josh Henson and he hires Charlie Dickey. And, and mm-hmm. Charlie Dickey is a ball coach now. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed watching him work. And, you know, one of my best friends is Matt Walters, the sideline guy at K-State. And he called me right after it happened and said, 
you, I think you used a word I can't use on radio, because uh, he said, we're going to miss Charlie Dickey. Charlie Dickey starts with, is the... Starts with SOB, right? Yeah, uh, the real the real <laughs> deal. Here's another thing, too, because this just proves that even when you're on the beat and you feel like you kind of know what's going on, you can get shocked. I, I uh, subscribed last year to Pro Football Focus, and uh, they put out a lot of interesting college um, statistics, you know, some of the 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 advanced uh analytics tevin jenkins not only did not allow a sack or a hurry and i don't know how i guess they watch a lot of tape but tevin jenkins target in pass pro and pass protection never touched a quarterback last year Hmm. the whole season pretty impressive i don't know why he's not getting all big 12 run uh he did on my ballot well I mean, I'm like, I'm I'm watching every play, and I'm like, really? I didn't notice that. I mean, I I didn't notice that he was just like a sweeper, you know, uh, over there on that side. But yeah, that's and that's now you're helped a little bit by both quarterbacks and especially Spencer or Mobile. But if your guy all season doesn't touch the quarterback, that um that's pretty amazing. So pretty good. Hey, re- where's uh, rest- where's Phil's gonna play real quick? Uh, Sills will be at the uh, right guard. Is That's that right? Thought, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, Rice Schneider, who doesn't get much credit, a former walk-on, he started a lot of games the last two years. He'll he'll be the center. And then mm-hmm. Bryce Bray, who I really like from Bixby, he's going to be the next big thing a- at that position. And then the two tackles of, you know, Jenkins has started for three years and, and Dylan started for most of two. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, they've got pretty good experience. Hey, real quickly before we let you go, Oklahoma's number one, Oklahoma State's number two. Kind of give me a cursory on what you think of the rest of the teams. Well, I, you you were in Austin last year as I was when Oklahoma State went down there. Remember all those players that got hurt? Um yep. something like nine players left the game uh for Texas. It was unbelievable. And, you know, what happens, they end up finishing 8-5. and I think that exposed a little bit a lack of depth at Texas. You would think Texas is one of those programs that's going to have a ton of depth. Um, I think they've got frontline talent, but I don't think they're ready to win the Big 12 yet. So I've got them ranked third in the Big 12. I do think Iowa State has the Big 12's best defense. defense. Um, They've also got the most prolific quarterback in Brock Purdy. So I've got them picked for a possible run at the Big 12, kind of an outside shot dark horse at the Big 12 championship. But uh, I've got them finishing fourth right now. And then Baylor's going to be in a rebuild mode. Uh, TCU is still lacking a lot of talent and depth. Uh, West Virginia's got some building to do. Texas Tech is, uh, you know, under Matt Wells is still building. Kansas State's going down this year, I think. They've got Skyler Thompson in their quarterback, uh, their quarterback, and, and seven of their top eight receivers. But boy, they lost literally everybody on defense. So, uh, and then Kansas at ten. That's how I see the rest of the Big Twelve shaping up. Yeah, the one I'm curious about, and and you mentioned they're in a rebuilding mode, is I, Dave Aranda at Baylor, and I know he's a good coach, and I, mm-hmm. I especially know his offensive coordinator very very, very well. Uh, Larry Fedora is a heck of a coach, but. To come in and they did lose a lot and have no spring with a new staff and maybe we're going to learn Zoom is the best football teacher out there other than being face to face. But I'll be anxious to see what Baylor does. This could be a this could be a rough year for for the Bears. So, I agree. Anyway, hey uh, John, I, I appreciate it again. Great job and and uh, like I, I mentioned, you've got. Um, the uh, the the Sooner site, the OU site on the SI Maven network, and cranking out a lot of stuff there. So, uh, yeah, if you if you need anything, holler. Awesome, I appreciate it, Robert. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. You bet. So, See you, man. Good job with Lindy's. Excellent. Thanks All right. a lot. Uh,